the deadline for submitting these uh, monitoring indicators was uh, uh, 15th of May this year, and uh, 24, 21 countries already provided uh, monitoring indicators. Uh, not all of them, and the other ones are working on them. Uh, we are now almost one month uh, uh, from that deadline. Uh, we know deadlines, but we are in a particular phase where, of course, it's not easy to, to provide uh, monitoring indicators. This was the first time member states were asked to do that. Um, beyond the indicators, we also uh, have to receive a list which lists uh, all the data sets and services which are considered to, be, to belong to INSPIRE, which I mentioned just after this slide. Uh, so all this is, I think, is very, very important, and uh, I have to to to, to say that uh, it's very uh, shows the in, the interest and the, the effort that member states are made in, making in implementing this in the proper way. Also in this exercise, which is basically reporting. Um, what is also interesting to be said is that. The, not all those 21 countries have already adopted a formal uh, set of uh, laws to implement INSPIRE, but they are nevertheless reporting on the implementation of INSPIRE, which I think is very interesting to see also a certain uh, difference in development of the legal framework and the, and the real uh, uh, implementation framework. So. Um, this is just a table which, again, is not supposed to be read as such, but uh, uh, this is to show you uh, each line corresponds to a country, and I, on purpose I removed the, the codes of the country. This is just to show that uh, uh, we received a lot, of, uh, a lot of information on how many data sets and services are currently considered as belong to the Inspire infrastructure. Not all of them, or if most, none of them, a uh, few of them, of course, are compliant to Inspire because uh, sometimes there is no, uh, not yet uh, anything to be compliant with, and in other cases, very recent. But still, we see that there is a lot of material around, a lot of information. Uh, a few, uh, a few figures. Again, everything is mixed up. There is uh, no, uh, no share by country or even by much detail. But these, I wanted to show these figures which have to be taken uh, as a really unanalyzed figures, but just to show that uh, uh, already at this stage we have got reporting concerning all the three annexes. Of course, uh, uh, a certain majority is for Annex 1, but we still have uh, uh, countries, uh, all countries have reported more than 2,000 uh, data sets which uh, belong to Annex 3. And the same if you look at the uh, services, you can see that uh, okay, a vast majority concern view services, not surprising. Another concern download, which is one fourth, but still we have already some uh, certain number of uh, uh, download uh, discovery, of course, and even invoke services. So this is also showing a certain effort in trying to understand and implement Inspire in a proper way. Okay, we move to the second part of the uh, uh, reporting obligations. The first part was monitoring, that means so uh, saying something on uh, indicators and uh, on uh, numbering a certain uh, list of data sets. There is also a, a more qualitative uh, requirement for reporting, which is a proper report, a paper report, if you want, electronic, but uh, it's a document. Uh, which has a certain fixed structure, and this is very important, I think, uh, because uh, uh, this allows a certain comparison uh, between, uh, between reports from different countries. So far, the 19 countries provided a report, which is uh, also very, very good, and uh, I, I, well, we discussed it yesterday, most of them, most of the other ones are, are, are on their way to be, to be, to be delivered. Uh, what I have not uh, read from the previous mail, but I, I, I want to remind here, is that both this information, monitoring and reporting, has a formal requirement to be made publicly available. And this is very important because uh, this is important because uh, the objective of the purpose of this is not uh, to allow the Commission to start infringements because there are no, not enough compliant data sets. The purpose is to let understand us, but also everybody, to be able to share what is happening in member states, how the implementation of INSPIRE is, is progressing, so that it is also important to be able to go through uh, those figures on the data sets and uh, uh, to go through the reports. Now, re the reports uh, are, I think, the first thing that should be, should be uh, read. 
as I said, it's, uh, they are useful to understand in a qualitative way the progress in the implementation of SDIs. Uh, the structure is facilitating the comparative analysis and you can also find a topic uh, among the, the, the many which are addressed by the reports. The fact that they are public and on public, uh, they are public on purpose, uh, I think is a, they are really a, a very important tool to uh, share experiences between countries. Um, there is for the time being a, a slight problem, of course, reports are, uh, of course, by definition, uh, in national languages. Um, and they will be published officially uh, in national languages. Still, uh, of course, to facilitate the, the exchange of information, we are trying to, to, to set up a certain practical arrangement for having translations available as well. Uh, If I uh, can mention again, just to be through figures, uh, something which comes from uh, the uh, from the report. Uh, this comes from sections which concern the function and the coordination of the infrastructure. So, in terms of sharing information, you can see what uh, uh, countries has, uh, have been uh, used in adopting and uh, uh, what kind of uh, coordination structure, which is one of the obligations INSPIRE, has been implemented in different countries. Uh, all the examples that are put here are, uh, let's say, taken at random, so there is no intention to show good uh, or bad examples, it's just, uh, just samples taken by the report that uh, I have got so far. So you can find uh, com and compare what kind of uh, uh, method and what kind of uh, structure has been adopted for implementing INSPIRE. Uh, there is a section concerning the usage of the infrastructure for special information, so you can see how certain countries have already well reported in the way in which uh, an infrastructure which is already there, even if not completely, uh, uh, of course, deployed uh, in terms of Inspire, uh, is already being used. And very interesting, I think, uh, a section which concerns uh, data sharing arrangements and cost benefit aspects. Uh, cost benefits has been mentioned broadly by Max before. Uh, I think it's uh, here also there, are, there is information which is extremely interesting. Not all reports have been uh, 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 have addressed this issue in a very extensive way. Some of them just mentioned that uh, there are cost benefits uh, uh, studies available. Uh, others have been a bit more uh, broad in explaining what happens. Uh, here, on purpose, on the contrary, I have taken uh, two good examples. Um, well, one is more simple, is the one uh, up there. This comes from the uh, Swedish uh, report, uh, which has a short description and basically shows that, uh, uh, realistically speaking, uh, for the time being, the uh, evaluation of the benefits is slightly below the evaluation of the cost, but the, uh, the margin in, uh, in the evaluation of the, the two uh, costs and benefits is quite uh, uh, unbalanced, and then the, the uh, benefits, uh, as you see here, uh, could uh, uh, largely uh, override the cost. Um, the other one is uh, uh, in Dutch, so you can imagine uh, where it comes from. Uh, this reports on a very detailed study which uh, the Netherlands have made in uh, trying to assess cost benefits. And uh, uh, you can see that uh, uh, it's a very reassuring curve here which shows that uh, uh, the benefits will go beyond cost uh, uh, in uh, five or six years from now. Um, in any case, broad or short, the reference in the report the reports uh, mention where you can find uh, uh, this information. There is still a, pro a problem of language, but still I think it's also very important to be able to share this information among countries. So, uh, this is the second part of the spiral roadmap. We are now speaking of implementation and uh, uh, different from the first one, we are not uh, uh, yet uh, at the bottom of the list, we are basically down there. Of course, <laughs> there is still work to be done in front of us, uh, the implementation. Uh, but this is not to be pessimistic, of course, it's just to say that we have a lot of work to be done. Uh, in terms of uh, then uh, access to all this uh, information, uh, you know that the directive, uh, first of all, said that uh, there should be a Eurogeo portal uh, managed by the European Commission. 
the JRC has already has